Hi everyone, I'm Sharon Lecter and I'm so excited to be joined today by the one and only Mike Lecter. Say hi, Mike. Hello there. And yes, we have the same last name. We've been married for 37 years, but we're together today because we've had the pleasure and honor of working together through various companies. And together we cover entrepreneurship and finance and management and the legal side, intellectual property. So together we, we create a much big arsenal of information related to you building the greatest success in your own business. So I'm very excited. Now, some of you may know me from the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I co-authored and I started that company and built it over 10 years. Let me tell you a little bit about Michael. So Michael had his degree in engineering, so he's an electrical engineer, but then he went on to law school and became an internationally recognized intellectual property and patent attorney. Not only has he helped companies all over the globe, not just identify and protect assets, but how to leverage it and the strategy to grow their businesses and many of them to a global presence. And in addition, he's actually in the last um, many, gosh, 10 years, was, has been giving back his talent by being a professor at the at Arizona State University. I'm very proud of him. I love working with him and his brilliance is, uh, I'm not at all biased. I think he's pretty darn brilliant. So, but let's start about the first company that we started working with. And it was called Sight and Sound. It was back in 1987. And we met the inventor through charity work that we were doing actually. And Mike Telpin patented the technology. Now this company, I had the pleasure of working with for four years. The first year we hit a million in sales, 9 million in sales, 23. And in the fourth year on our way to 52 million is when we sold the company. But the strategy behind this was part of the conversations that Mike had with the inventor. So I'm going to let Mike talk about how we identify the ability to leverage and to build this company. Well, in this case, we were using other people's reputation to help push forward the business plan for Sight and Sound. Now, Sight and Sound had a fantastic technology, but it was brand new. People didn't understand it. And it was really kind of different than what people had seen before. Bookstores at that time were very quiet and sedate places. This was noisy. And we needed to, to do something to uh, get, to develop the goodwill with the consumers. So we went to companies that had that goodwill. Disney, Marvel comic books, and we licensed their characters. So we were able to take advantage of their goodwill to sell our products. Now we had to pay them a license fee, a royalty, in order to use that. But the, the sales were so much more, the volume of sales, it made sense. So we leveraged their goodwill to sell our product. And we had a great success because it was people recognized the brand and wanted to have an additional Disney product or a Warner Brothers product. So it helped us really have exponential increase in our sales. But we were also writing really big royalty checks to these companies, big checks to Disney, Warner Brothers, Marvel Comics. And I said, you know, if we're going to do this again one day, I want to have it where we're the ones getting the big royalty checks. And so come to, as, it, as it came to pass, um, we sold this company, as I said, and Mike and I moved to Arizona in 1991. And in 1992, our oldest son went off to college and got into credit card debt. I was pretty mad at him, but I was more mad at myself. So that was really when I dedicated the rest of my career to financial education and, and financial literacy and teaching not just young people and families, but business owners how to truly build their businesses so that they can create financial wealth and financial independence. So you fast forward a few years and that's where I met my partner, Robert Kiyosaki, and we wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And this started a 10 year process of building a global business related to the concepts of assets and liabilities and building financial well-being. But this time that strategy, we said we wanted to do it a little bit differently. So Mike, why don't you talk about our strategy with Rich Dad? Well, in this case, the Rich Dad company had the intellectual property. What it didn't have 
was the manufacturing capacity or the distribution capacity. So we went to other people that had that already. Now, we actually started out self-publishing Rich Dad, but we got to the point where we didn't want to make the investment in building the, the, the printing facilities to meet the demand. So we went to a company that had those facilities and licensed the intellectual property to them, and they just paid us royalties. Now, it was all part of, of a global plan. Ultimately, there were products in, in what, a uh, hundred and some countries? Over a hundred countries and more than 50 languages. Now, the trick was, though, to make the products distinctive so that sw someone that saw one product knew that it came and that the other products came from the same place, from Rich Dad. In China, they referred to Rich Dad as the Purple Storm. It, because everything, all of the products had that similar look, they were distinctive, and we were able to develop the goodwill that, were, that went to all of the different products. And we did this from the beginning, Mike, because remember when we first started off, the publishers were telling us your book should be green, red, or black, because that's what business books are. And we said, no, that's why we want it to be purple. We want it to be distinctive. We want it to set apart from everybody else. And of course, today, when you go into bookstores, those few bookstores that are still here, you see a lot of purple in the business section because of the success of Rich Dad. But that was all by design. So as you're building your company, you want to be strategically thinking about your brand and how you can be distinctive. And today's webinar, what we're going to dive into in a minute, is exactly that competitive advantage. How do people think of you? your competitive advantage in your business. And so as we talk about this, when I left the Rich Dad organization in 2007, I had the opportunity to be sought out after, both Mike and I, because we had the reputation, the Napoleon Hill Foundation, which of course, you know, Think and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill, during that time in 07 and 08, we had certainly the economy crashed and so the idea of reinvigorating the teachings of Napoleon Hill. Now, they didn't have that same distinctive look and feel and coloration that, that, that we had built in our companies. But we did bring the idea, and Michael talked to them about creating a brand of books so that they could trademark the Think and Grow Rich trademark as it related to a series of books which gave them stronger intellectual property that would last further into the future. And these books on the screen are the first three books that I did with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Again, reinvigorating the teachers of Napoleon Hill. But the issue is not all shoes fit the same. And so what Mike and I did was we created a program that highlights the various elements, what we call the essential components of a successful business. And as you can see on your screen, the three outside components are what keep you focused and keep you moving. The mission at the top. Every successful business does one of two things, solves a problem or serves a need. And that's what keeps you getting up in the morning. Everything you're doing is trying to solve that problem or serve that need. And you've got the team, the people around you. As I said, business is a team sport. Mike and I work together because we, where he's weak, I'm strong. Where I'm weak, he's strong. And so you want to have your team of people that can support you where you want to go. And it's your employees, your customers, your advisors, all of those keep you focused. And of course, your own personal leadership ability to continue managing and recognizing when you need more new members of the team, how to move forward. And those three things are what keep you focused on accomplishing your mission. It, how everything else builds together to keep you focused on moving in the right direction and staying on track. But then you also have to have the elements within the business, just like a house has to have plumbing, has to have a foundation. All of these elements inside are equally important. And of course, the very bottom one, which is the foundation, is the legal side of your business. So I'm going to have Michael take over and describe these internal functions. If, if you study successful businesses, you're going to find that every single one of those businesses 
has all of these elements. They've got a good foundation, a good legal foundation to, on which to build the business. They've got, they chose the right type of entity. They have the right contracts in place. They protected their intellectual property. They have resources available to help them implement their business plan. Sometimes that's capital. Sometimes that's resources like uh, a manufacturing capacity or distribution channels. They almost always will have uh, stellar communications and marketing to build relationships with their customers, with their vendors, with their employees, and with their investors. They have business systems in place that lets them scale. It lets them leverage their expertise so that uh, it becomes a true business. Sharon, did you want to say something about that? Always. I love talking about business systems. Many times people say they're business owners, but they really own a job, not a business, because they haven't taken the steps to systematize their business. And that's a very important element. That's the defining, that allows you to take your business globally. That allows you to scale your business. It's like, think of an operations manual. How do you answer the phone? How do you take an order? How do you thank your customer? How do you take a receive payment? How do you ship the product or provide the service? Um, and then each of these other elements, what is your process? What is the system for examining your legal contracts or making sure you're examining your intellectual property? And we're gonna be talking specifically about competitive advantage, but every one of these items generates competitive advantage. But the business systems is, is the lifeblood of your company. That's what keeps you consistent. That's what allows you to duplicate. You may want a franchise. You may want to build it by having other locations. So your systems allow you to make sure that you've got consistency and you have the ability to not necessarily have to be there all the time because the systems are there. So they're working when you're not. And then of course the top is deliverable. The deliverable is the product that you provide or the service you provide. And it's at the very top because all of these other things are important to have to support you being successful at doing that deliverable because that deliverable is right under mission. That's what you're doing. That deliverable is helping you reach your mission. But the way it can be successful is making sure you have all of these other elements. But as we're talking about competitive advantage, you know, all of these areas can generate that. But what is competitive advantage, Mike? Well, competitive advantage are the reasons why your customers prefer doing business with you instead of your competitor. And the reasons why you have better margins than your competitor, why you're able to be more profitable than the competitor. And so when you have a competitive advantage, that adds value to your business right? I mean, that increases the valuation because once you can identify it, a lot of times, and this is where we, I introduce Mike as an intellectual property attorney. So um, Mike, let's talk about what is intellectual property. Okay, well, intellectual property is the intangible assets that results from creativity, from innovation, from knowledge, and good relationships, goodwill. Now, you'll find that Establishing a competitive advantage is only part of the equation. Not only do you have to establish it, but you have to sustain it. You have to be able to have that competitive advantage over the long term. Having a product that's better than your competitors doesn't do you much good if your competitors can copy it as soon as you put it on the market. So you need to find a way to prevent that from happening. And that's through intellectual property, right? I mean, that's what we've been talking about. And so today we're talking about you and your business. So keep thinking as Mike's talking, how does this apply to your business? Most sustainable competitive advantage involves some form of intellectual property. Okay, so how do you go about identifying competitive advantage and potential intellectual property assets? Now, you can have competitive advantage, like Sharon was saying, in any one of the elements of your system, of, of your business. 
It could be in the form of having uh, exclusive contracts, having exclusive relationships with vendors or, or distribution chains. It could be the fact that you have money available so that you can take advantage of opportunities as they arise more quickly than your competition. It could be that you just have such great reputation and goodwill that the customers are going to come to you because it's a status symbol. It could be that you've got business systems that make you more economical or more reliable or faster. Or, of course, it could be that you've just got a better product or service, something that your, your competitors can't provide, something that's unique, something that's better than the, com the competition, or something that's distinctive and sets you apart from the competition. Now, what you have to do is dissect your business. You look at every aspect of your business and identify those things that are unique, that are better, and that are distinctive. Now, anytime you solve a problem in your business, you have a potential competitive advantage and potential uh, intellectual property asset. I mean, think about it. If you have, if you encounter a problem in your business, do you think that maybe your competitors will also encounter that problem? Yeah, they may. And if you come up with the best solution to that problem and you can get exclusive rights to that, you have a huge competitive advantage. Now, the trick is to drill down to the essence that gives you that competitive advantage. What is it that makes your product or your business unique? What makes it better? What makes it different? And you want to identify precisely what it is that gives you that advantage. So you may have something that's better than the competition. Well, why is it better? Let's say that, that it's, you have a product that can provide a result more quickly. What aspect of that product lets it provide makes it provide the result more quickly. You identify that and get exclusive rights to it. That's how you sustain your competitive advantage. Now, typically it's going to involve some form of intellectual property. So you're gonna to want to, to protect it. And when I say protect it, I mean establish exclusive rights to that essential element. You want to establish exclusive rights so that you can use it, but nobody else can. Now, once you've got those exclusive rights, that's when you can leverage the, your, your competitive advantage. So I want to jump in here for a second, Mike, because this is so, so important. Every successful business out there has gone through these steps. They've identified their, their, their competitive advantage. They've protected it. If they've got intellectual property, they can protect and they've leveraged it. And so those things work together. And that's where our expertise comes together because Mike has the ability to support you in identifying, protecting, and leveraging. And so we're going to be um, diving into this a little bit more, but always go back to your company. How does this apply to your company? And maybe you don't have it today, but you can think of a way to build on to what you already have. As Mike said, you may determine a faster, a cheaper, a, you know, a, a, a more specific industry. You know, because what happens is we can be looking at um, identifying what you provide that's different from someone else. And it can be all of those elements, faster or cheaper. And that provides you that competitive advantage, that competitive advantage that makes you more attractive to your customer. Go back to the definition of competitive advantage. It makes you more attractive to your customer and it improves your bottom line. So how do you establish exclusive rights, Mike? So you've dissected your business and you've identified the things that give you your competitive advantage. So you want to establish exclusive rights to those. And there are, are certain legal protection mechanisms that you can apply. Now, essentially, 
every uh, civilized country uh, has some has these protections in some form or another. Probably the most basic and ancient form of protection is simply to keep it secret, trade secrets. The uh, you can you can protect trade secrets simply as a practical matter by preventing your competition from getting access to the information. But there are circumstances where you're going to have to let people know. Maybe you're having someone build a product for you, or maybe the trade secret is the intellectual property that you're licensing to someone. You can still create an, a, an obligation of confidentiality using contracts. There, there are utility patents to protect invention. There are design registrations to pr protect in, um, industrial designs. Trademarks protect your reputation and goodwill. Copyrights protect works of authorship. And mass work protection is available to protect the, the layout of, of uh, semiconductor chips. Now the trick is to put together a strategy that uses all of these protection mechanisms to their best advantage to make sure that you have the ultimate protection for whatever it is that's giving you your competitive advantage. So let me jump in here because as an example, Mike, and we, we haven't discussed this before we did the webinar, but um, you know, globally, universally, Coca-Cola is in a red can and it has one of the most famous trade secret formulations. And so there's contracts related to that. And they, you know, so all of these issues work together. And so when we were building the, the Rich Dad brand, we were looking at, um, you know, through our contracts, building confidentiality related to what we were doing, but also we were combining trademarks and copyrights and patents as it related to the game and looking at how they could be built together to make an even stronger um, protection mechanism to conti continually keep us above our competition and become the go-to source. So we want you to become the go-to source for what you provide. And so having that arsenal of protection, again, having the right people helping you identify things that you can be doing to protect your company and to build that value into your company only speeds your way to success and creates that ability to, to really step into more of a global platform, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so once you've established the exclusive rights, you really want to make money from them, okay? So you can use that exclusive rights to sustain your competitive advantage, to prevent your competitors from doing what you're doing. But you can also create additional income streams through licensing. You can identify areas, uh, companies out there that are not your competitors, but might be able to use your intellectual property. You can license them to use the intellectual property without affecting your core business. That's pure money. And that's what we did at Rich Dad. You saw that, that slide that had all those different products. So we ended up licensing. We had at any given time, we had over 5,000 people around the world working for us, but we only had 15 people on our employee because uh, on our employee role because we had licensing agreements with companies all over the globe who wanted to take our intellectual property and share it with their tribe. And so that licensing allowed us to expand more quickly and keep a minimum of management on our, I just had to deal with the CEO of that company as opposed to all those individual employees. So it made my life easier and allowed us also speed to market today is a big issue. So licensing with someone who's already established in that market allows you to have greater and quicker speed to market. Right, Mike? Look at, at it this way. If you've reached your capacity and you want to grow, you've got a choice. You can uh, develop the capital to 
invest in expanding your resources, putting in a new plant, expanding your manufacturing capability, or you find someone else that, can, that has those already and you license them to, to use your intellectual property. You take advantage of their existing resources. And a lot of times, Mike, people say, you have to have money to make money. And one of the things that's really important, you know, Mike wrote the book, Other People's Money, OPM. And it's about understanding how you can use other people's resources, other people's people, other people's time to be able to build your business. So not only is it quicker to market, but you don't have to come up as, as, as much cash up front. And so in today's world, it's, it, licensing is really something you should be looking at, but making sure, I'm gonna put a plug in for Mike, you've gotta have the right legal counsel. You have to make sure you have the right contracts to protect yourself, to make sure you've got quality control provisions, all of those things. But again, in lieu of raising the cash, find that joint venture or that licensing partner that has their resources, their time, their people, who will put their energy and their resources into helping you grow your business. Now, all of these things we've just talked about in this webinar, you know, we've just hit the surface. So we want to join and invite you to join us because we're excited. We're coming to India on September 9th and 10th. We're coming to the 10X Wealth and, Wealth and Business Conference. And we're going to be each of us talking separately and some together to continue going deeper into all of these aspects of the essential components of a successful business because we want to give you the greatest opportunity to learn from us. We've made a few mistakes along the way. We've had a few big wins. And so we're there to share you so you can learn from our mistakes so you won't make them but share the things that we did right so that you can benefit, benefit from those things and employ them in your own business. Mike, you want to say something about our talk in, in September? I would. I look forward to seeing everybody on September 9th and 10th at 10X Wealth and BizCom. Because we are, we're on our way. We're going to be there. And we invite you to come because we want the opportunity to meet you eye to eye and hear more about your business. So please come up to us and tell us that you've seen this webinar and that you want to hear more from us because we're looking forward to it. And for more information, again, the, the website is at the bottom of your screen. But we dedicated to you. We'll be there as a, as a two-day education event. No sales, totally education, the kind of things that Mike and I love to participate in because at the heart of it, Mike and I are both teachers. Our goal is to be there to serve you. It's a service event, not a selling event. So please plan on joining us and come and be with us on September 9th and 10th. Check out the website 10xwealthandbiz.com forward slash live and we will see you in September. Have a fabulous day. See you then.